Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad you're here. I see a few great costumes out there. Welcome, welcome. Let's sing together. Let's let's do this. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Morning. Is Reverend Cindy watching? Okay, well, if she is, sorry uh, you got a bug bite. She's, nur she's nursing a bug bite, from what I understand. A pretty good one. I guess those Utah bugs. Ah, okay. I thought you said bug, Bud Light. No. <laughs> nursing a Bud Light. <laughs> you might want to turn up your... <laughs> no, not Bud Light. Bug, it's, it's my bug bite. Aids, yeah. Jeez. Uh, I'm your host, Shane Hughes, and we're so glad that you're here. Uh, welcome to our Center for Spiritual Living, Salt Lake City. Um, I'm just going to cut this really short, and we're going to go eat chili. <laughs> no? You don't think so? <laughs> uh, 
uh, <laughs> uh, love streamers, please share with us where you're love streaming from. That'd be great. Um, in case you were wondering, our center is a spiritual community that teaches a philosophy based on daily living. Um, uh, based on <laughs> li daily living based on spiritual principles and practices that are universal among all religions. We honor every pathway by which people seek to know and connect with the divine, and we work on our individual consciousness to help make the world a better place. Um, Ernest Holmes said, each one of us is an outlet to God and an inlet to God. Okay. Please say with me our purpose. We are an open, welcoming community, celebrating our divinity, loving our humanity, and nurturing our journeys of spiritual discovery. Okay, uh, our theme this month is Living from the Overflow. And Reverend Myrna's talk today is Lilies of the Field of Consciousness, or did we change that? Is that where we're going with? You just stepped up, didn't you? Wow. Uh, Selena will be doing our reading and prayer, and Audrey Gum is currently holding high watch for us, knowing our best and highest good. Today's special music is Carrie Hillary. <laughs> right on. Excellent. Next week's speaker will be Reverend Cindy, possibly. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope so. Get some antibiotics. Uh, and next week's special music will be Real Folks with uh, Sophie Zane. That's good. Um, by the way, Lana is doing a book study from 1020 to 1050 sharp in the prac room every Sunday. Are you doing it next week? <coughs> okay, you're, oh, you're just a bomb. Uh, so, no, actually, Myrna is doing book study next week. And the book is Attitude of Gratitude, yep. How to Give and Receive Joy Every Day of Your Life. That's cool. Uh, what? Uh, Robert wants to say something. Come on up. Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> break in. Actually, two things. One I wanted to say, it's more than a, a bug bite. It's like a spider bite. I saw her foot. Uh -huh. Her foot is like this big. Wow. It's... Uh, she can barely walk. But actually, what I was uh, coming up to say was uh, Gail updated the little thermometer there. We're over 10% of our goal in pledges. You'll see there's pledge forms out there on the table with envelopes. You can fill them out, put them in the basket, or give them to me, or whatever. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Okay, today, right after service, is our second annual. I feel like we've done it more than that. Our second annual Halloween chili cook-off and costume uh, contest winner um, of those two contests. Mel is not competing this time, and she was last year's champion, and I was really hoping to take her out, but I was. I was. But. All right, so don't miss this. It's going to be good. Uh, uh, please go to our website to get any uh, more information about our center, which is www.spirituallyfree.org. Okay, uh, mi also uh, midweek we do a uh, meditation on Facebook, Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living. If you need to pick me up, just jump on it. Who's doing it this next time? Or, uh, midweek meditation, is it the same person? I don't know. Does it? Okay. Hey, guess what? We rent out our classroom and sanctuary. Right, Teresa? We do. Uh, for birthday parties, weddings, business meetings, paintball events. <laughs> if you're still looking for space for your next event, please contact Robert Wetzel and he'll get you the information you need. Um, all right. Do we have anybody visiting us for the first time? Any first timers? Nope. Dang it. <laughs> uh, any first time live streamers? Raise your hand. <laughs> okay. Uh, just know that uh, uh, you are welcome here, and we have a gift for you at the hospital. Well, there are nobody, so never mind. I'll skip right over that. Uh, our ministry is founded on prayer. Prayer helps us deal with whatever comes our way and helps us to recognize spiritual purpose for whatever might be happening in our lives. If you're having trouble knowing that, 
Please let one of our amazing practitioners know that they're wearing the purple stoles, and they'll help know it for you until you can know it for yourself. <clears throat> they'll be in the practitioner room right after services, but you're going to want to hurry that up because we've got chili downstairs. Now I invite you to go within and allow the centering music to connect you with the God within. reading this morning is from Creative Ideas, A Spiritual Compass for Personal Expression by Ernest Holmes. And it's entitled, I Live Abundantly. Why should we go through life as though it was something that had to be endured? As if there were not enough joy happiness and good to go around. We always seem to be limiting the possibility of experiencing the good things in life. If we really are in union with the divine source, then we should have a feeling of abundance in everything we do. For our source contains all things, whether we call them big or little. We need to feel that the divine is surging forth into everything we do, that infinite intelligence is flowing into our consciousness, and that the create creativity of the universe is centered in our act and motivating it. Should we properly attune our consciousness to this divine abundance? automatically we would find betterment in everything we do a broader deeper experience a higher realization and a greater good today i expect the more abundant life i keep my thought open to new experiences and opportunities for greater self-expression as I share and give myself to life, the one life pours its bounty upon me. 
as God finds a fuller outlet through me, I experience a new consciousness of joy, peace, and security. So let's just keep that thought in mind as we go into a time of silence. As God finds a fuller outlet through me, I experience a new consciousness of joy, peace, and security. It's from this place of stillness that I easily recognize that one presence and power moving this day and always in and through life. Expressing today and always as divine intelligence, love, compassion, divine right action, And it's from that place of wholeness that I'm filled with gratitude for this day, this morning, for the messages to come, this beautiful music, the beautiful weather that we're enjoying in this fall day this beautiful valley that we live in. Mm, from that place of wholeness, I know that I am part and parcel of that one. And as I know this truth for myself, I know this truth for each and every person here and all of creation. There is no place that it is not. Therefore, it's whole and complete within each of us bringing to us all those same attributes of divine intelligence, love, peace, compassion, moving us with divine right action to the next highest and best. So I just bless this service. I bless each hand that has made it possible, every volunteer greeting us at the front door, providing the service and the music, Raj and his team, for every person, whether in this room or joining us virtually now or later. Just know that you are blessed. So I just rest in these truths fully accepting the good in life as together we say and so it is I invite you to sing along with this song um, this is your last chance this month <laughs> Living from the Overflow by yeah. Rick Charette yeah. Grateful. 
Thanks for singing along. I'm happy to introduce our, our special music for today. So grateful when she comes to town from California. Great songwriter, singer, just prolific songwriter. Um, the amazing Carrie Hillary. Let's. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonder Woman! <laughs> My hair sister. My hair brother, although he did cut his, <laughs> and she trimmed hers. I don't know. I don't know about these people. So I want, I want, I saw a spider thing. I want that. Because <laughs> I wasn't sure what I was, except for I'm wearing s cobwebs or spider webs. <laughs> cobwebs are in here. So thank you for inviting me back. It's wonderful to see you all. And I figured if Rick could come in tights, I could wear a child's <laughs> costume. <laughs> if he's got the chutzpah to do it, mm -hmm. I got the chutzpah to do it. May our lives be a reflection of the love that's inside. Our eyes be the windows. We have nothing to hide. May our spirit be joyful and our hearts open wide, gifted and giving on this spiritual ride. Love is here for the giving. Let your heart be a guide. It's your life, so start living. There is endless supply, endless, endless supply. So reach out and touch your neighbor, show them their worth. We are spirit's creation, we're perfection from birth. Abundance surrounds us, there's no lack, only mirth. Gracious and grateful for our time here on earth. Love is here for the giving. Let your heart be your guide. It's your life, so start living. There is endless supply. Endless, endless supply. Endless, endless supply. Open and Grace, 
we are part of the source endless extensions of a powerful force eternally given all we need and much more give back pay it forward even the score love is here for the giving let your heart be your guide it's your life so start living there is endless supply If this is not the scariest crowd I've ever seen. <laughs> if you're watching us online, we really aren't, well, maybe we are that crazy, but you know, we're having a party here today. And Halloween's coming up, so we thought we'd invite Superman and Wonder Woman and whoever's back there. You know what? If you've got a costume on, we just take, come up here so the people that are out there can see what you look like because you are something special. Come on up here. Yes, all of y'all, come on, come on, come on, come on, we can do this, <laughs> of course we can, look at this bunch, can you, okay, and what's new pussycat, <laughs> oh, and we've got a deviled egg, and holy Moses, Can you imagine how much fun this is? Don't you want to be an all the time part of this really scary, ridiculous, fun bunch of people? <laughs> I love you guys. Look at this. Isn't this fun? We've got a couple of people taking pictures. Thanks for doing that, guys. And don't forget, we are having, we're having a chili cook-off uh, downstairs after the service. It's going to be good. And there will be prizes for some of these costumes, just in case you didn't know. So, is it time to get serious now? Okay. <laughs> uh, Halloween, uh, Elvis Duran says that Halloween is not only about putting on a costume, uh, but it's about finding the imagination and costume within ourselves. There's a lot of imagination in this room. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for doing that. This is cool. So let's get started a little bit. Uh, over the past month, during the month of October, we've been talking about prosperity because we've started a pledge drive so that we'll have, don't know how much money we have to spend next year. It's always a good idea to know ahead of time what your money's going to be like before you overspend Anyway, that's what we're doing. So, so during the first week, we talked about setting an intention. How, how do we create not just wealth, but all kinds of things? So we started the first week by talking about setting an intention. The second week, we talked about how to actuate that intention and turn it into reality. And then, of course, when Christiane came last week, we talked about the law of abundance. Wasn't she fabulous? Yeah. Not, not, not that you're not, Cindy. You're, you're a fabulous master, and we love you, dear. But, I'm, you know, get well, will you? Because I don't like to be up here, and I know you do. Okay. In week three, we talked about the law of attraction, and then this week we're supposed to, to finish it up by talking about once it shows up and how easily and effortly whatever it is we intended shows up once we get God in the process. Now, th as I talked about that and thought about that, I realized 
that it looks a lot like our five-step prayer, our what we call a spiritual mind treatment. So I'm going to talk about the combination between what happens when we pray, using the way that we pray. But first, the talk of the title, the talk of the title, the ti title of the talk. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. You've got me all confused now. Bless your little heart. I know that's your job. Give it up. <laughs> the title of the talk for the day is Lilies of the Field. So I went to the King James Version and found what it really said. So if you're allergic to the Bible, shut your ears. We're just going to say that, and we're going to say it with all love. It says in Matthew, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to your statue? Which of which? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to your statue? Consider the lilies of field, how they grow. They never toil and they spin, and yet. I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed by one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, will he not so much more clothe you? In other words, you can have anything you want. God said so. So let's start with gratitude because that's what starts everything. The last two steps of treatment are gratitude and release. Now, we've got a lot to be grateful for, do we not? In this little room, stop a minute and feel the love and the joy that's here. It's always here, even when we're not in costume. It's all about that love and that joy. It's also about a philosophy that has helped me turn my life around and made me a happy person. It took a long time. It took me a while to figure it out. But I think that might be part of the reason you're here. There are other reasons we come together. I think we come together because we love each other. I'm grateful for this beautiful room that we come into, and I'm so grateful that those of you that are out there can be here with us. Can you imagine even 10 years ago, being able to do such a thing as that. We used to have to put clothes on and dress the kids up and come into church. Now you all get to watch us in your jammies. And that's wonderful. It is a wonderful thing. You know, I teach a, a class, and my students are in Kenya. I teach it at 10 o'clock in the morning in Kenya. It's 8 o'clock at night. It's an amazing thing. The world that we live in is just amazing to me. But it starts with gratitude. What are you grateful for in your own life? The people that you love? The music that we hear? Just that we can be here together is wonderful. Once you're in touch with the gratitude that's in your life, now we get to move forward and turn it into something else. Those things that we've been talking about all month. Setting an intention, deciding what it is you really want. And did I say that? Something that you really want. So many of us, and I'm one of us, used to want what we were supposed to want. I was supposed to want to climb the corporate ladder and be a big shot. I wore a blue suit, didn't wear a tie because girls didn't, but... I kept doing and doing and doing what somebody else told me I should do. Don't do that. Ask yourself, what do I want? What do I really want? And then you look off to find ways to do that. What do you really want? I think for most of us, it's love and joy. Relationship, good health, and of course, prosperity. Abundance. I say abundance. 
Prosperity kind of makes me think about money, and that's important. If I say abundance, I have so much abundance of so much in my life. And if you'll think about it, so do you. It's a good thing. It's a very good thing. Once you've got something in your mind that you really want to have, the first question that you have to ask yourself, because it's a good one, is, do I deserve this? The answer is yes. Whether you believe it or not, the answer is yes. Because if you put it into your mind, if your mind came up with that, if it's something that you want, of course you can have it. Consider the lilies of the field. Does that make sense? So what do you really want? And if you really want it, the next thing that you do is just start moving your feet, don't you? You want to activate that. That's what we talked about the second week. That, that once you start, decide what you want, it's not enough to say this is what I want and then sit back and expect it to show up. You know, I, I was do, doing some long-term uh, prayer work with some people at a time, and somebody called me uh, for prayer because um, they, 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 they needed a job. It, they, they, they'd been without a job. They were in the, from the Middle West. Uh, they really needed to have a job. And, and they'd been praying. And they, they knew these principles, so they knew how to do the right kind of praying. And they knew that, the God, that if they prayed, God would, 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 would give them what they needed. And, they, and it had been weeks. And nothing had shown up. But they hadn't looked in the newspaper or tried to find a job. That doesn't work. Once you, once you get, get, get activated, of course the universe is, is moving in your direction. No question about that. Of course it is. But it's also moving in the direction of showing you ways that you can get what you want. Okay? This story exists, and I'm sure that you've heard it, of the fellow who wanted to win the lottery. And he really, he prayed, and he really wanted it to happen. And he said, God, why is this not showing up? I'm doing everything that you told me to do. I pray every day. I think about things, and I, 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 I do meditations, and I do all of this stuff. Why is this not working? And, and God said back to him, do me a favor. Buy a ticket. Yeah. We move from there to the law of circulation because we do know the, the law of abundance, that what we give out comes back. So one way to get what you want is to put stuff out that will attract it. You know that. This, this is not news to most of you. I don't, we might have some new people out there, but y'all have heard this before. It's not old. It's not new. Those are the three things that we've been talking about all month long. Now let's get to the point with the, what, what we really are here to talk about, which is the last two steps. First of all, let's decide it doesn't have to be hard. Okay? There was a, I listened to a fellow named Seth Goddard, and he's a, he is a business person. But a couple of weeks ago, he talked about the difference between doing easy things and doing things with ease. As long as you're doing easy things, you're not getting very far, are you? Because if you're doing only easy things, you're afraid to do things that aren't easy. Now, on the other hand, if you can do harder things easily, wouldn't that be more fun? You think I'm having fun up here? <laughs> this is terrifying. And how I get, how I deal with terror is I make fun of it because that's what I do. But I, I feel at ease because I know you're my friends. So it's not hard for me to be here, as long as I remember that. Okay. Oh. No, not yet. Okay. Yeah, just, just, just give up the idea that it's got to be tough. As long as you are, you've already decided what you want, you're already envisioning what it's going to look like. You use visioning as a tool. We use visualization as a tool. We write affirmations. We do all kinds of things that, get, that help us to believe that we can have what we want. And then we just kind of get to 
be grateful that it's done. Gratitude, you see, is the next step. If we want to release something, we let it go, and then we're grateful that it's on its way. It doesn't seem complicated, does it? As long as we are aware that it's on its way, and we are, because don't we believe that there is a God that provides us with things? The first step of, 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 of affirmative prayer is knowing that there is a divine something on this planet that does care. Whether you want to call it intelligence or you want to give it a, a, a body and a mind like, a, like the Santa Claus God, whatever you want to call that, there is something that created the universe. It's not an accident. And it's not an accident that it created us and that we created us the way we are. There are no accidents. And so we know that there is a divine purpose to this life. And we also know that we have that power, that infinite presence, to create whatever we want. That's the second step. The third step is what we've been talking about, figuring out what we want and figuring out how to get it. And then the next step after that is to let it go, knowing it's going to show up. What the Buddhists called giving up the outcome, releasing the outcome of whatever you happen to do. Because you know what? When you start, when you get to the point where you start wanting stuff and you know it's going to show up, you always don't know how, how it's going to show up. If you want a job, it might be somebody calls you and says, are you interested in a job? Or it might, it might not be a job that you really want. You might be want something that is a source of money, if that's why you want a job, or a source of joy, if that's why you want a job. Figure out what you really want, and then look around. Because in the process of getting there, once you've done all of this affirmation and you've turned it over to the divine and all of this stuff, things are going to show up. And they may not be what you think they are. So you have to kind of stay awake with all of this, too, and respond to the universe in the way it does. And don't get in the way. A friend of mine the other day sent me a note as an email that says, God is still writing my story. Why do I keep trying to steal the pen? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, And then you give that up. And then you just look at the outcome, hope it's going to happen. So how do we do that? What are the tools that we know that we have that can help us to get along this way and to change this little dude that lives in my head that keeps saying, no, you don't want to do that. That looks too hard. You're too old. You've never had learned how to do that. You don't know every step of the way, so why would you even try? You know, don't you have a little guy in your head that keeps telling you that? Uh, I, I named mine Aunt Dee Dee <laughs> because I had an Aunt Dee Dee who did that physically for me. Why do you, do you think you are? <laughs> so don't, don't listen to that little dude in your head. Actually, he, she is just trying to be, keep you safe. It's not a big problem. Just pass a little love to this giant ridiculous thing in your head and, and turn it over. Let it be, and do it anyway. And how you get rid of the, of the little negative stuff that's going on in your head in a, is in a couple of really important ways. One is to write affirmations. Does anybody not know what those are? They're little statements that you say to yourself. Okay, I really do deserve all of this good that I anticipate. I really do deserve the things that I want. It's okay if I have that which I want. It's okay for me to find the right partner or to make myself healthier. It's a good thing to get up off the chair and walk around the block. It's a good thing to invest my money and to share my money with other people because we know the law of circulation works that way. And most of the time, we, as, a, as a practitioner, as a minister, and people come to me for help, it's in one of three areas. It's either relationships, or health, or wealth. I think that covers most everything that we talk about. And those things you can have. No problem, as long as you want to have them. Affirmations work. So 
so you write it down, first person, present tense, positive, and, and as if you're re something that you really want, and you say it to yourself over and over and over again. Write it down. Put it, over the fr put it on the fridge. Put it over your computer screen so that you see that over and over and over again. And then this little dude in your brain, in your brain just decides to give up because it knows that you were serious about making this change. And we can change our minds in that way, easily. The next thing we do is we visualize. Imagine what you want, and just close your eyes and imagine it very, very clearly. If you want perfect health, imagine a body that works well. If you want more money in your, bra in your bank, imagine it. And guess what? It'll show up. Now, why? I don't know. God's in charge. And as long as I allow that to happen, and I know it's going to be what I want it to be, it'll show up. We don't know when, and we certainly don't know how. Sometimes we try to find out how. If I believed that my job was the only way I could have money, guess what? My job is the only way I could have money. It's not the only way you can get money. So visualization is a process of very vividly looking at something to see how it is. And you can do that all whenever you want and just know that it shows up right. Make a feel, yeah, feel it in your body. It makes all of the difference in the mind. All of the difference in the world. The third way that I can think about is prayer, what we call spiritual mind treatment. And if you've never done that, take a little time to go across the hall after the service and before the chili so that these people can help you understand that. And our practitioners, we, I don't know how many we've got in the room right now, but you know who they are. And you can find them on the website. Talk to them. Call them up and say, I really need somebody to visit with me for a while. I need somebody to get me out of this funk I'm dealing with right now. Well, they're good at that. They study a long time to do that work, and it's good. Okay, and then there are some other things you can do. You can study the science of mind philosophy. Read the first four chapters of the science of mind textbook if you haven't read it for a while. It says it all. It says it all. And take a class. Here, or if there are all kinds of things happening online. If we're not teaching the class here at the Salt Lake Center, you can get online to other churches and other places and, they, and take the classes that way. We have one practitioner who's taken most of her work online because the classes weren't being taught here while we didn't have a minister. And then talk to a practitioner and just let it be. It's going to show up. Let it be. Anybody heard that phrase before? Oh, thank you. I knew somebody would say that. Here are the words. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. Say that with me. Let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. And when the broken-hearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer. Let it be. Think of all of the broken-hearted people in the world right now. All around the planet. Let it be. And when the night is cloudy, oh, for though they may be parted, there is still a chance that they will see there will be an answer. Let it be. And when the night is cloudy, there is still a light that shines on me. Shine until tomorrow. Let it be. That's your homework, folks. I always give you homework when I'm up here, you know that. I do. So two things that, that you've got to do for the, rest, for the rest of this day and part of them for the rest of the week. For the rest of the week, please stay awake. Go through that process, do those things, and then watch. Just watch. The world changes easily and effortlessly. It really does. But you've got to stay awake and you've got to see what's going on. And you've got to keep at it if you want to. The second and probably more important thing is come to the party today. 
seriously. We've got eight different people who brought all kinds of different chili. Some of it's vegetarian, so don't worry about it if you are. And don't worry about it if you're not. And we're going to have a good time. There will be prizes given away down there for the best costumes. And of course, a prize for the best chili. So come with us. And that's all I got to say about that. Thanks for being sticking with me. Let's pray. Let's do a little prayer right now. Knowing that there is an absolute power and presence in the universe. We can call it God or Buddha or Frank as far as I care. But whatever you call it, you know that it exists and it exists in you and as you. You can feel that. So go with me to that place in your body where the divine resides. And know that that power within you can create anything you choose. And that right now, we choose. I choose joy, primarily. I choose peace. I choose to know that all of those in pain all around the world can find that peace and love and joy. I know in our country that all the conflict that appears to be happening right now, we've, we've become more and more aware that beneath all of that, we are all aspects of God. And that we all really want the same thing. We want peace and joy. And love. And so with this knowing, together we release all concern. And in deep gratitude, we look about the world for the good that is there, for the love that is everywhere. And we know that we are more together than we are separated. And that the outcome always is good because God's in charge. And so we let it be. In deep gratitude, we take a deep breath together, and together we say, and so it is. Thank you, God. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. It's time now to share the wealth so that we have shared. If the, yes, so thank you. So the law of cause and effect, the law of I circulation so always says that what you give, that you receive. So Those of you who give, give automatically in some way or another, Please know with the rest of us that you are blessed. Those of you in the world out there, know that we love you and we care. That you are as much a part of this family as those of us who sit in the room. And we are grateful for your contributions. So here we are. 
We have a beautiful witch coming up to pray with us over this. Please hold your hands out. Sending the energy toward this wealth and knowing that the wealth is sending the energy right back. Ah, we bless this offering. We bless those who provide for us. We bless the good that this money will do in our community and elsewhere. And we know that life is opening in new ways. We are prosperous, abundant, wonderful people doing good in the world. And it is good. And so it is. Here's some more from Carrie Hillary. That was a wonderful talk. Boy, are you lucky to have somebody like that that can just step it up right when needed. So we're going to affirm what she taught us today. So this is a call and response, but we sing the chorus together. So I'm going to teach you the chorus, and then after that, we'll sing a line. You'll sing a line. We'll sing a line. You get the picture? Call and response. That's what it's all about. So the chorus goes like this. There is enough. There is enough. And I am enough. I am enough. We are enough. So do that with us. There is enough. There is enough. There is enough.
with me. Carrie Hillary. Yes. Uh, Carrie has a, a sign-up sheet out in the, in the foyer and lots of CDs for sale. Um, the sign-up is for, you just put down your email, she'll keep you in the loop and her performances and other things she loves to share. She's a great speaker too. Um, so check that out. Wonderful songwriter. Um, all the stuff that we believe and know and love to be reminded about through song. Um, just wonderful to have you here, Carrie. Thank you. And th <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carrie tells me she watches the live stream sometimes. <laughs> yeah. uh, Rick, you have a question from the audience. Hi, Shane. <laughs> no. <laughs> How did you know? No, I wanted to be a hippie. I dress and, my husband. And, uh, see <laughs> the greatest American hero. That's what this is. Yeah. No, not, not Superman. Um, I relate more to the, you know, the regular guy who just finds himself a, a costume and has these special powers and doesn't know how to manage them very well. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's just me, yeah. yeah. So um, if you don't know how to manage your powers, come take a class at our center. <laughs> and thank you, Myrna. It's just a wonderful, yeah, ditto what Carrie said. We have yeah. somebody just thank say, you, oh, our minister's not feeling well. Can you speak? Oh my gosh, I'd be shaking in my boots, even as a superhero, <laughs> that in no way. So thank you so much. Remember what she said. Uh, practitioners available after the service right across the hall. Just a, w a really quick um, prayer lift you for the week. Um, make that a part of your abundance ideal. Um, just, just go for it. All right, everybody, let's stand. Let's, let's sing this wonderful song.
na 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 na